For today's lesson, we're going to know more about Jean August Dominique Angra. Dominique was the eldest child of sculptor, painter, and musician Jean Marie Joseph Unger and was born in 1780 in Montauban, a tiny town in southern France. He exhibited a talent for violin and a predilection for painting at a young age under his father's tuition. Angus' father sent him to the Académie Royale de Peinture, Sculpture et Architecture in Toulouse in 1791, where he studied with painters William Joseph Roques and Jean Bryan, as well as sculptor Jean Perry Vegan. He also continued his interest in music, performing second violin with the Orchestra de Capital de Toulouse from 1794 to 1796. Angra left Toulouse for Paris in August 1797 after his father had secured him a position in the studio of Jacques Louis David, the famed neoclassical master. He would gain not just from David's instruction but also from the bustling Parisian art scene. The recent French military triumphs in Holland, Belgium, and Italy had delivered trophies from historical art collection to Paris, giving Angra precedent in the access to Renaissance masterpieces. The presence of Madonna de la Sidia from the Florentine Palace Pitti, as well as the Vatican's coronation of the Virgin, fueled his passion for Raphael. Dominique's early work reveals both his cross of academic convention and his experimental departures from it. This combination won him early acclaim with his ambassadors of Agamemnon receiving the Fritz de Rome. Political unrest and financial constraints forced him to postpone his trip to Rome for five years. Angraffs continued to create in Paris during this time, quickly demonstrating his aptitude for portraiture. He submitted five portraits to Salon in 1806, including an early self-portrait, the Revere family portraits, and most notably, Napoleon I on his imperial throne. It was only on the road to Rome that Angra would learn of their lukewarm reception with even his teacher David calling his Napoleon unintelligible. Angra decided that he would remain in Italy until he could return triumphant to Paris. As the winner of the Prix de Rome, Dominique was expected to send his work to Paris to demonstrate his progress. He was determined to excel in his contributions. Instead of merely sending back an academic male nude, his Oedipus and the Sphinx transformed that exercise into a history painting, the genre most celebrated by the Academy. Dominic also deliberately cultivated relationships with wealthy patrons, using his contacts at the Academy to gain commissions for both history paintings and portraits. While his thought portraiture was a waste of his talent, his 1830 marriage to Madeleine Chapel made it profitable and necessary. Indeed, Dominic only survived the Napoleonic War's financial aftermath, which culminated in the Empire's collapse in 1814, thanks to his reputation as a portrait painter. While the state's accusation of his Roger freeing Angelica from the Salon in 1819 encouraged him, his other works were not well accepted, so he stayed in Italy, relocating to Florence in 1820. Only weeks after his arrival in Florence, Dominic received the most important commission of his career. The French Ministry of the Interior requested a large-scale religious painting for the Cathedral of Montaban. To memorialize the consecration of France by Louis VIII to the Virgin Mary in 1638. The result was the vow of Louis VIII, completed in 1824 and received at the Year Salon as an unqualified success. The important turning point in Dominic's career when he became the chief defender of the classical tradition in opposition to the growing trend of Romanticism represented at the same salon by Eugene de la Cruz, seen from the massacre at Chos. 
Dominic's success at the Salon and his election to the Academy de Beaux Arts as a corresponding member in 1823 allowed him to return to Paris in 1824 as a success after 18 years abroad. The following year, he received the Cross of the Legion of Honor from Charles X and another commission for a grand history painting on the ceiling at the Louvre, the Apotheosis of Homer in 1827. Despite his official recognition, Dominique had a few missteps. The martyrdom of St. Symporian finished in 1834 for the charge in autumn earned mixed reviews at the year salon. Critics found the painting's gloomy tonalities, disordered composition, and anatomical deformity of his figures. Dominic swore he would never exhibit at the salon or accept government contracts again. Despite his volatile reputation, he closed his Parisian studio and applied for the directorship of the, of the Academy de France in Rome. In December 1834, he returned to Rome after narrowly defeating Philo Pentor who raised Bernet by one vote. Despite his dramatic exit from Paris, the still ambitious Dominique was not entirely true to his work. Commissioned by Prince Ferdinand Pilif, Antiochus in Stratonice in 1840 was very well received in a private exhibition stage in the patron's residence. Although he had vowed to never exhibit his work in public again, Dominique agreed to participate in 1846, retrospective featuring Jacques Louis David and his most formidable students. After his master, he had the largest number of works on display and reviews focused on his portraits, calling him our century's master without equal with regard to his portraits. Then, at the Exposition Universal in 1855, he was honored with a monographic retrospective in an entirely dedicated gallery. In the last decade of his life, Dominic practice became increasingly friday as he focused on producing works for his close friends and family. He was revered. Emperor Napoleon III even appointed him senator in May 1862, yet his final working years were spent revisiting old motifs in long-abandoned canvases, including modified versions of the Apotheosis of Homer, Antiochus and Stratonice, and the Oedipus and the Sphinx. His final recorded work listed in a notebook as a large version with the host and two angels is dated December 31, 1866. Within two weeks, Dominic would be dead of pneumonia. He requested the contents of his studio to what later became the Musée Andra of Montaigne. Though closely associated with the Academy and its reputation for conservatism, Dominic Angra interest in linear beauty and his willingness to distort his subjects to achieve a more pleasing visual form have impacted the avant-garde. His multiple canvases of female harems and odalisks inspired other artists to take up the subject. The impeccable illusionism and abstracted bodies of Angra's work create a sense of strangeness that would inspire the symbolists and surrealists with its combination of the familiar and the peculiar. And that's it for our neoclassical artist Jean August Dominic Angra. I hope you learned something new today. Until then, I'll see you on my next video.